Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. You probably already saw from the title of the video, I do have an eyeshadow palette in my collection that I have never played with. So the palette that we are actually going to be playing with is the Glam Light Friday the 13th palette. This did come out around Halloween last year and I never played with it, but I just thought maybe some of you also might have this palette lying around and I thought that it would be fun to do a look with it. I will be doing this kind of as a get ready with me type video. You do see my Harry's which I did take a shower earlier today and honestly I thought it'd be dry by then. I'm trying to still figure out my whole, like, curly hair routine. I'm just using my normal Maybelline Fit Me foundation. I'm working on my curly hair routine, so I was doing the whole pull up and thing. And I had my hair up, honestly, for a little over an hour. And last time when I did that, it did dry it pretty well. Uh, this time, it's not. I'm trying just to let it air dry the rest away. And hey, maybe by the end of this video, it will be completely dry. And then totally random. I don't know if any of you have noticed, or I don't think I've said. If you don't know, I don't normally have eyebrows, but I have been trying to grow them in. Who am I? I'm still gonna go ahead and fill them in like I normally do. What have all of you been this week? I am so happy to to finally be off muffer Tuesday and Wednesday. It's Tuesday as I am filming this. So I'm super excited just to have a couple of days off. I'm really excited. I'm super tempted. Don't hold me to it, but I know I've talked about this before. I'm tempted for next week's video to do a talking about new makeup. I'm still not 100% sure if I will be doing that. I did honestly want to do it today, but I had forgot to look on Instagram for some new releases to talk about. These brows are feeling large and in charge. Gonna use my Danessa Myricks Vision Cream Cabal Concealer Type Product. I'm really sorry if you can hear that. Apparently, people can't knock on somebody's door, or text them to let them know that they're here. They just honk their horn obnoxiously. On a random, does anybody else like when you hear a horn being honked? Be like, oh, is that for me? Even though like you know it's not. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Do they think that's gonna work? Would you respond? Maybe it's just me, but, like, if you're being that crazy, I feel like I'd be like, oh, maybe I'm gonna wait. Unless, I will say, if that was, like, our way that there were, that we had, like, agreed upon, that was like, oh, hey, like, blah, 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 like, I'm gonna honk when I'm there, which still is so not my vibe. I'd be like, bro, just shoot me a text, because, hello, hello, most of us, most of us have a cell phone to be able to text and be like, hey, I'm here. Like, I, I don't really know why people love to do this honking thing, and it just seemed very impatient and aggressive. I really don't like that. But anyways, I was going to talk about this product. Where did I just put it? This. I don't honestly fully know how I like it. It's a good product. Like, it has a nice coverage. It doesn't feel anything special, honestly. I had got it, like, on that sale, so that's nice. It has a really nice amount of coverage. Again, it's really nice. One thing I've noticed about Janessa Myrick's products, which good on them or good on her, is the shades tend to skew pretty light. Like, as myself as a pale person, I do tend to usually get, if not the lightest shade, pretty close to the lightest shade. And a lot of her shades are even too light for me. So I've mainly been using them for highlighting. But to get to the whole story, what I'm talking about... I have been using it on my nose, like, I'll apply it to, like, the high points of my face, I guess, to add, like, a little bit of highlight. So I'll do it, like, in between the brows, the nose, I'm using it on the eyelids as a base, which I will be doing today as well. And then I will be applying some under the eyes. Now, everything else on the face does seem to react really well with this, but I do notice that my nose starts to feel a lot more oily. Now, granted, I don't know if my, like, I've also been working on my skincare, so, like, that doesn't feel like that should be something that should be happening, that my nose is getting more, like, oily, but I feel like it's been getting more, like, oily, like it did when I was younger. I don't know, I don't know if my body's just figuring itself out, or, but part of me also does wonder if it is this product because it is the only area on my face that I feel like I haven't been doing touch-ups on my makeup when I'm at work, but if I was going to, it's like the only place I'd be tempted to because I feel like oily. Now as I'm like talking through that, I kind of think maybe it's not the product, it's just my face and I'll have to figure out a way to like mattify the nose. 
Maybe we'll use a bit of like a primer, just for the nose. So I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this. I don't even know if this is technically a mattifier. It's probably not. It's called the Impossible Primer for Wine Wild. I bought this sometime last year, and I was gonna save it for summer because it does feel like a summertime primer. It smells kind of fresh and a bit coconutty. I smell nothing now, but that might. I know before when I've used it. I thought I could smell something, but we'll see if maybe that will work on my nose. On a random, sorry, sorry if I'm gonna seem super random, but hopefully this is okay with you. I did purchase, and I'll try to include it, I did purchase a sunscreen, which I'm actually really excited. I don't have it today, I literally just purchased it today. I was watching Dr. Shereen Idris, Hello Doctor. So I've really been getting into like more skincare -y stuff, trying to take better care of my skin, and I was watching a video of hers today that popped up talking about international sunscreen and I have been on the lookout for a, a little bit, not even that long, for um, an international sunscreen, especially when I heard Cassandra Bankson talk about sunscreens not from the US, like being a lot more like advanced, being, you know, more hydrating, being more like skincare focused, not so heavy. Cause for myself, to be honest, I have not worn sunscreen in like years. I know that sounds horrible, my only caveat I would say is that I am a person that I'm indoors most of the time. I don't really go outside. It's not really my vibe, especially in the summer. But I do know, especially as I'm aging, and I am 34, turning 35 in August, but I know that as I'm aging, it is going to be even more important to take care of my skin, to wear in skin, uh, sunscreen. But anyways, hang on, coffee time. The sunscreen that she recommended that it's really good for, like, red skin, rosacea, which I still I haven't gotten a dermatologist. I don't really have dermatologist money, to be honest. So I have not looked fully into that, but I have, I noticed I have a lot of redness, especially in my nose. You probably tend to see in my videos that my face is pretty red. So I've been like, maybe I have, I'm assuming I have rosacea or something similar. And it was a sunscreen that she recommended. Okay, what color are we thinking? I feel like I always want to go in with black, even though it looks kind of gray on camera. I almost want to do, is this a blue? I think this is a blue. Yeah, you're doomed. It looks like a bit of a blue to me. So let's do this. I am very curious to see how the shimmers are going to be in this palette. Let's do a little swatch real quick. Sorry to ruin the faces. I hope they're good. On a random, I don't know if anybody has noticed, and I hope this is not just me, but ever since they did their Scooby-Doo collection, oh, sorry, the ones not last year, but the year prior, their shimmer formula and those were, like, really good, super glittery, and I just feel like I've not been seeing that in their formula as of late. Like, I'm not going to say their shimmers aren't good because they I mean they are the lights reflecting they're very shiny I think especially the shade here which is Jason lives looks really stunning and has like fine glitter and I feel like if you're looking for more a shiny but not like super glitter in your face these of course I mean they're still going to be impactful but they're not going to be like over the top at least what I'm looking for so we'll probably use that shade we'll have to see the really shiny one I'll have to see. I would say these are nice, but they're not that same formula. Let me get that palette real quick. So these are the two palettes that I'm referring to, the Scooby Doo ones. I know some people really do not like these. I actually really do like them. And I feel like you can just tell that the shimmers just, the, the, for one, they're all the same, which is nice, but they have, there's something different about them. I feel like they're just, they're, they're literally, mm, they, they're shiny. They're glittery, they're, I don't know, it's it's so hard to describe, but I feel like they're just, they're very rich, whereas some of these, I mean, this one again is so nice, it just, I think to be honest with you, it's missing that glitter aspect. I think what's weird to me is, I personally feel like every single shade in these two Scooby Doo palettes has that same product, and I feel at least from the last few palette launches that I've had from Glamlight, it's just not the same. I don't fully know what's happening. If you know, if you're not new to my channel this year specifically, I really, or just, you know, hopefully the rest of the time, but I really want to be focused on when I buy makeup, buying something I feel like is actually going to be good for my collection, something I actually really want to bring in. I don't want to just be buying products that are just okay. I'm gonna start, so let's start with that navy blue shade, you're doomed. But to be honest with you, 
Lamlight kind of is feeling a bit on the back burner right now for me. Like, I like Lamlight. I know a lot of other people like Lamlight, but Lamlight just is boring me. I think that their ideas for the collections are really good. The formulation, especially the shimmers, which I think I've noticed more about myself recently, shimmers are something that are really important to me in a collection. And if I need to buy singles, like, that's completely fine. But I really don't necessarily want to be buying palettes like this one, for example, or some of their other ones when they're just going to be okay. Mattes are impeccable, and I think that I appreciate that for Glamlight. But something that I am more looking for, I notice, is a good shimmer formula. I feel like there are so many brands out there that have really good mattes, which I think mattes are great. But I just really want them to go back to the drawing table with their shimmers because I feel like we're just not giving, or we're not getting what these Scooby-Doo palettes gave. And I don't even know what that formula is because, to be honest, I don't feel like I have... A lot of other palettes, maybe the Michaela one palette, which, I mean, whatever, it's not, not like we're going to talk about Michaela, but the formula in that palette was actually really good. I, I liked it. The shimmers were really nice, very blingy, and I just don't know if they've reformulated. I don't know if with the pandemic they had to go cheaper. I do know that the brand has kept their prices very affordable which is really nice, but I think of with this beauty community, I think that it is best if we move towards a realm of having really nice products and not having so many. There's way too many launches, and to be honest, a lot of them I'm just not excited about because I feel like I see what the brands are putting out, and some of it I'm excited about, some of it I'm just like, meh, want, want. I'm almost feeling more tempted just to dupe out from my own collection, which in that realm of like, Sure, it's going to save me money, and again, if you're not new to my channel, you all know that I'm really trying to be better with my money in terms of, like, makeup and stuff, but also, like, I was thinking about this the other day, I'm like, I'm like, well, I still want to buy makeup, I don't want to, like, not buy makeup, I still want new formulations, I still want to try new things out, I don't want to feel bored, I don't want to also feel like they're putting out stuff that's just not as good. I'm really curious to see what Clam Light comes out with next because I know they came out with their Betty Boop collection and it was pretty. I'm not going to say it wasn't pretty. If you're a collector, I think that's great and it was a really nice thing. Real quick, as we continue to talk, I think I'm going to go in with the shade Mask. I'm just going to take this shade just next to the dark blue and kind of just going around the edges. This gray looks so similar to this new blue. Okay, if this, if the darker shade is a gray, I apologize because if you don't know, I am colorblind. So it looks kind of navy to me. But it also could be a really dark gray. And if it is really dark gray, it's actually a really nice shade. Or is is masked like a green? Oh, I have no idea. It's pretty. I hope the look looks pretty. Anyways, I'm very curious to see what will be my, my next makeup purchase that I make. When I do March coming up, I will be talking about what I did pick up in February. I mainly only picked up like one makeup item. Some backups of a makeup item, technically. So, nothing, like, super exciting. So, I'm honestly just really excited to find out, like, what is going to be that next item that makes me want to buy. And I don't know if maybe it's just I felt overwhelmed with eyeshadow palettes, which is definitely a truth. Especially with the end of last year, Halloween time, I feel like all the brands, brands that I follow, were just, like, throwing it all out there. And I felt so overwhelmed. I haven't even played with them, like, on a different random note. This palette... Elements of Evil, which I did do a video on this. But this was around that time period where I was feeling very rushed. I was putting out a new video every single week of a brand new eyeshadow palette, and I had no time really to get to know my palettes. This baby, I don't even know if it's available still. I hope it is. And I, I stand by what I said in the video of pick it up for the shimmers, but the shimmers are so good. Literally, literally stunning. All of the shimmers, I appreciate that all the shimmers are pretty much the same formula. Now that I'm like staring and I'm like, are they? Maybe this one, Arsenic Wine, it's like right here. That's the only one I think that's like not exactly the same as the other ones, but they have such a strong like pigment. And sorry, my, I do have darker shades on my finger, so it's probably showing up, but it's this stunning dual chromey shade. And I, I've just been so obsessed with this palette. I pulled it out the other day because I have felt within this rut, which I don't think it's bad to use the palette. So I've really been trying to get a lot more use of my Morphe Jane Charles palette, but I've been feeling this bit of like a slight like depression of I'm not using my good stuff and I'm like well is it gonna go bad if I'm just using up this older palette so 
I have been like allowing myself to dip back in with some of my products that I know are really good. And to be honest, it's giving me this like excitement with my eyeshadow. Like I don't feel the need to buy something new because I have palettes that I never really even gave a chance that I, 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 you know, barely played with them. Like even ones that come to mind right now is Gourmand Girls, the, uh, the Haunted Palette. I, I don't really think I really use that one much. I did use the other one that I can't remember the name of it right now, but I use that one a lot more. It came out also last year. I think that one came out in summer. That one kind of, at least for me, really started this whole like eyeshadow kick. But real quick, I'm going to go ahead and dip. I hope this one is not too shimmery. It looks like one of those pressed, what do they call them? Like the bats that have a little bit of shimmer. It's called New Blood. I think I think a red will look pretty. If not, I might dip in with a little bit of Camp Blood. But I like the deeper one first. Ooh. Powdery. That's another palette that I really want to play around with or use, you know, use a lot more is the ones from Gourmand Girls. I really have not used those in a long time, and I really did like the formula. Okay, this red is, yes, absolutely. Going back with the complaint to Glamlight, one thing that has really been frustrating me is why are they doing these shades? Why are they doing these shades, the mattes with the glitter? Why? Do you, do you see me put on my eye? It's disappearing. There ain't no glitter there whatsoever. And to be honest, my real frustration came when they launched that the Scream palette, right? I forget what it's called, Ghost Face palette, around Halloween time, this, you know, last year. And the shades that they showed that were, like, super pretty, at least one of them, for sure, in my opinion, which it was this, like, dark black with all this glitter and shit. Sorry, because all this glitter and stuff. It was one of those. I'm pretty sure. I am pretty sure. I cannot... The other ones, again, they were, they were fine. They were a bit better of a formula. They weren't, like, as shiny as I wanted them to be. But I am pretty sure with you that one of them for sure was that matte with the glitter formula. And to be honest, I, I think it's so dumb. Like, even for example, say my brows. My brows are that formula from this palette, this Elements of Evil palette. The black is really good, which is what's in my brows, but they describe it as a multi-chrome, right? A multi-chrome glitter thing. Girl, there ain't, unless you're like super close up in there, you're going to be like, oh, there's a little bit of glitter in there. Okay, cute. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing exciting. Like, I don't know. And that's something, I'll be honest as well, with brands. It's going to make me irritated. And I feel irritated for, like, myself, but also, like, my fellow consumers. Because I, I hope, I hope, let's, let's hope, that I am healing my need to constantly buy, 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 buy. But I know that fellow young people, or just people my age, or older, or whatever, are world is so, especially this country, is so rampant on consumerism, and it frustrates me when a brand is giving out just subpar products. Like, they're fine, whatever, but we're mainly buying it because it's cute, and I think that that's bad. That's very overconsumption. That's not great. Like, we need to, like, dial it back in, make something good, get to the top of the list, like, at least, at least for me, and those are things that are going to be important to me is playing with less makeup, buying less makeup, reviewing less makeup, but actually getting stuff that's going to be good, that's going to be worthwhile. I don't want to just buy something just to buy it. I don't want to, I don't want to feel fall prey like I did last year with several brands too on top of my mind right now or Odin Sigh and Glamlight that I fell prey to this. I need to buy every single one. And again, that's another stack of palettes that I barely have touched because I'm either, I just don't want to, they're not like on my mind, it's way too much makeup, and I really just want something more simple. I want to appreciate my makeup a lot more. I'm gonna go ahead and buff out with this brush from Glamlight from one of their collections last year. I will say this, this, I'm about this. Whatever brand line this is from, from Glamlight, I forget. I probably said it before in a past video, I don't think I will buy a pack of, but I would. Especially the cheap price. I do like these brushes. These were actually, or are actually, really good from this line. I do think they had one brush that makes me mad and I don't really like it. It's one of those, like, really small flat brushes. And I, I just, that's just not my vibe. I think that, and especially to, like, the handle was really fine compared to every other brush in the collection. I think there was either four or five brushes. And the other brushes were fantastic. Absolutely love them. I'm liking this. It's like the gray mixed with the red is kind of turning, or maybe it is blue, I don't know. Kind of turn almost like purpley. It's nice. It's pretty. I like it. I think I'm just going to do... Should I just use my finger or should I use brush? I guess I use brush. So I'm going to go ahead and do... Do... 
dipping with the shade Jason Lives with this brush from Melt. I'm just gonna start pressing that in. That's pretty, Ooh, I like that. I wish it was a bit, I might have to play with the finger to see if it gives that more like really shine. Cause I feel like it's giving gray with a bit of like sparkle. I want something that I feel like I can blend out into my skin tone. So I would not say it's not applying well with the brush. So let's try our finger. Okay, the brush is, not the brush, the finger is the way to go. If you really want that nice, more foiled finish from this, I would definitely say use your finger. Okay, that looks pretty. That is pretty. Okay, real quick, I'm just gonna go through and apply the rest of my foundation. For contour, I have really still been loving this e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand. I definitely want to pick up another one of these when I do run out, but I know I will be using up my Danessa Myricks ones I want to use. The more creams I am, gonna be very curious to see how those do in the summer. If they kind of break up, I am gonna go ahead and stop using them until it is winter again. Hopefully they don't go off. That might just be a risk I'm gonna have to take. So I've been keeping my contour relatively the same. The only things I will say that I've been doing different is I'm taking for the neck, I'm taking it a bit lower than I used to. As I feel like I'm trying to learn my face a bit more. And I still am doing the bit on the neck, like all the way down the neck. And I really still feel like that just really helps to bounce back the light in to not look so, like, stark white. And then for the hairline, what I am doing now, hopefully I can show you, is I'm taking just a little bit in. So I, I think I always did this where the hairline is receding. I'm not really taking a whole lot here because I do still have hair here. Only a couple of dots through the hairline. I think I actually just realized that I was gonna stop doing it here. We might have to clean that up because I feel like it's just, this This product is really good, but it's very, very pigmented. Just buff everything out. I feel like this product almost sets down similar to how a foundation would or like a concealer, which I do appreciate that. I do take a little bit extra time to make sure it buffs out pretty well on my neck. Unfortunately, being colorblind, I feel like sometimes I can't quite see if it's blending in all the way, but I hope so. I basically have been put, or just push up against the cheekbone and then buff it upwards. I just love how this product blends so well, but it's not like overly wet still. It really sets down, which I, I really appreciate that. If any of you have tried, the original Charlotte Tilbury one, let me know how it is. I really struggle with e.l.f. and the fact that they're very dupey. Like, I appreciate them, what they do for the market. I do wish they were a bit better about creating, like, their own products. That's kind of something that kind of sucks, I feel. Especially because they really are becoming this really massive brand. I mean, they've been massive for a bit, but especially with Morphe kind of disappearing and not being as popular anymore. Or is, is Morphe even a thing? Or is Morphe gone? But it's interesting to me how it seems that Elf is just taking over for them. And they've been doing the whole duping thing for a very long time, which I think is perfectly fine. I want them to come out with something that's, like, their own. I do appreciate them for the affordability. And that's where, again, because your girl don't have that kind of money, I do tend to go for more of a dupe. Oh, I did actually forget that I have this out. So I'm going to go ahead from the same, I think, collection. Take my Chest of Souls blush trio. So I think I'm just going to stick with this peachy one that I love. Is it weird that I kind of want to wear a red lip? I think we might do that. But let's finish up the eyes. So I'm just going to grab a fairly clean, fluffy brush. This is one from Glamlight, that Scooby-Doo collection. I just want to make sure everything is really buffed out the best it can be. So I think I am going to take something along the lower lash line. Let's use this Morphe brush. It's like a flat kind of brush. And I'm going to go ahead and dip back in with a mask shade. Does anybody struggle with saying certain words, especially because I'm such a fast talker? Ma I can say mask. Easy. Masked. Masked. <laughs> like, I feel like I don't want to pronounce it correctly. I don't know. It feels weird. But I'm going to take masked. Masked. Underneath the eye. <laughs> 
blending it out. Probably gonna go about two thirds in because I think I will move a little bit of that shimmer shade under the eyes. Taking another fluffy brush, blend out that gray. Real quick, I am gonna take some of the Milani Stay Put Eyeliner into my waterline. I'm gonna go maybe like half the way in. So for lips, I am just going to do red like I had said. So I'm gonna go in with this Palladio Red Lip Liner. I have literally had this thing for a hundred years. Yeah, it's called Rock and Red. And honestly, it's still going strong, so might as well. For our lip color, I am going in with the Alva Matte Lip Stain Shade Red Apple. I'm also sure this red was a bit brighter, but for one, as I don't really wear red that often, I do want to try to use this sucker up before I dip back in with my Lisa Eldridge one that I absolutely love. Let's go ahead and do our lashes. So I will just curl as normal. And then for mascara, I did open up my new tube of the Supernatural Melt Mascara. It is just a really, a decent, what is it decent? It's a good mascara. I really like it. This is going to be the end of today's video. I really do hope that you did like this video. Just hanging out with me, playing with some makeup, especially makeup that I have not played with before. Definitely let me know down below what you do think. Give this video a like if you do like it. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this or just to keep up with me and my, and my journey. I would absolutely love to have you here. And I think that we're really going to make something special out of this. So yeah. Thank you all again so much for being here, and I will see you on my next video. Okay, bye!